Hello, VC. This is Dave with your psychedelic snack, uh, number three. Uh, out cruising around today and hit an estate sale, and they found out uh, they had some pretty good vinyl. I picked up about 10 albums, uh, about five Jethro Tall, and uh, five that uh, kind of psych. And here's the first one. Uh, Mike Bloomfield, Al Cooper, Super Sessions. Actually, this isn't Super Sessions. This is the uh, Live Adventures. I always get this confused with the one that these two did with uh, 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 Stephen Stills. Uh, they did a, a session with Stephen Stills, but this is about the same thing. It's a great album. It's got uh, Dear Mr. Fantasy. They do a, a, a cover of that uh, from Traffic. Uh, they do uh, Simon and Garfunkel, Feeling Groovy. I think that's Simon and Garfunkel. They do The Weight. It's like half covers, half uh, uh, psychedelic jams. Some of the psychedelic stuff is the uh, Perholi Model Highness. There's a very psychedelic song on here. It does have a gate full with you know, information. A dollar, you can't beat it. I do have this on CD. I have the... Uh, the stuff with Crosby on CD. I think there's like a, a half dozen of this these these three guys. Uh, but uh, it's good to have it on vinyl. And again, this is some this is one everybody has. Cream, Wheels of Fire. So I won't really go into it, but a lot of people forget that uh, the producer was Felix Papillardi who went on to be the bass player for uh, Mountain. And uh, he was commissioned by Robert Stigwood. Uh, Stigwood was uh, uh, apparently a label head, but he also uh, did work with the Bee Gees too. So, but this is a uh, pretty good copy. I'm sure it's not a, uh, yeah, it's not a uh, original pressing or anything. I think it's on RSO, yeah, RSO. But, you know, dollar is great find. I, I have all that on CD. I have the box sets and everything. Uh, this one was a, a one that I hadn't heard. Uh, the Outsiders. The Outsiders were a, a garage rock band in the mid-60s. They had a hit with a, a track called uh, Time Won't Let Me. And this was their second album they did. And uh, it's not bad. Uh, it's got a... Actually, a lot of the songs sound just like Time Won't Let Me, which which really isn't bad because I love that song. So if you like that, that uh, track, if you like The Outsiders, uh, Time Won't Let Me, you may like this album too. Uh, yeah, it's pop, kind of pop psych, but uh, yeah, I like it. Uh, this, is, this is a find of the day. Uh, this is the most underrated band ever. You may be able to hear them in the background. I've been playing them a little bit. Can't Heat. Live at Topanga. I think I pronounced that right. Topanga Corral. This is a this is a great find. I haven't been able to find this on CD. Any Can't Heat album I get because they are a great group. They're like a, a, a boogie, psych, um, blues band um that's a great cover i love the cover but this is really cool it opens up and you get a nice view of the band now that's bob height this is bob height and this is alan oh I forget, alan wilson i believe uh they're no longer with us uh they, they both passed away i don't know about the other three members of the band but Apparently, oh, there's the back label too. The back label's really cool. But apparently, uh, they're having a Woodstock reunion, 50 year reunion, and there's a band named Can Heat going to uh, on the bill, uh, from what I heard. But I don't know, is it really Can Heat? This is Can Heat, these guys. This is Can Heat right here. Great album. It's a. Uh, it's actually not recorded live in Tabagna, 
I don't know how to pronounce it, Canyon. It was recorded in Hollywood, so I don't know why they why they did that, but it's great. I just listened to it. It's in perfect condition. Uh, I didn't even know it was the thing. I've never seen it on a CD or anything, so it was definitely uh, good to find. And the last one on my list, I actually had a copy of, but uh, I found a really good uh, near mint copy of this album, uh, with, which will replace my my old copy. This is Dwayne and Greg Allman. Um, in the mid '60s, there was a band called the 31st of February, and Dwayne and Greg uh, they were actually formed here in Jacksonville. And uh, Dwayne and Greg joined this band. Uh, their drummer was a, a guy named Butch Trucks. So what happens is they were gonna record their uh, their second album, and for whatever reason, it didn't. They, they ended the recording and uh, it didn't get released. So uh, Butch Trucks and the two Almond Brothers went on to form the um, you know the Almond Brothers, and. Uh, Around 1972, after uh, Dwayne Allman passed away, they decided to reissue the uh, uh, 31st of February's second album as the Dwayne and, and Greg album. Um, but actually, it's a really good album. I enjoy it. It's got a lot of covers, mostly covers, uh, Morning Dew, uh, nobody knows you when you're down and out, uh, but it's also got two uh, uh, songs uh, written by Greg. Uh, Melissa, this is the first uh, uh, Melissa version that we've heard. Uh, this is before Dwayne was playing slide guitar, so it's a really interesting. It's a lot different from the one we've heard on, uh, I think it was uh, Brothers and Sisters. And uh, also, he does a, uh, he original is uh, God Rest His Soul, which I believe uh, Greg wrote in honor of uh, Martin Luther King, who had recently uh, been shot. But it's a really great album. Uh, I mean, it's uh, it was probably one of those things that they tried to capitalize on the Allman Brothers after Dwayne's death. It might have been something like that, but um, here's the back cover. The back cover's... Like kind of like the front cover, but uh, the label is um, bold. Get it, on here. it was recorded in Miami, I think around 1968. But uh, but yeah, it was a pretty good haul today, and that's all I got. I uh, hope everybody has a great weekend and. Uh, Get well soon, Mick Jagger.